What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going over a much anticipated and my favorite Barbarian build of the season, or in, in, in its entirety, is LOD Hoda, which is Hammer of the Ancients. We had some people asking about a build, a Barbarian build that could really push uh, like some speeds for 10100s, 105s, 110s, 115s, etc. And Hoda is definitely the one. So I'm going to go over everything that you need for the build and how to play it. This build is going to be a little bit different than traditionally how you would play this, but it still works and I have a lot of fun with it. So let's go over all the pieces of gear. First and foremost, I do want to mention that any LOD build is just very hard to gear. It, it takes a lot to get to it because you have to have the Legacy of Dreams gem maxed out and you need to have all of your items ancient like the squirts and not just legendary like my mordix braces so just to point that out make sure you do that when you're building uh the build so we have leoric's crown this is mainly because the increase the effect of the gem socketed in here which is going to be a diamond so we have almost a full 25 percent cooldown which is huge because our cooldowns on call of the ancients and wrath of the berserker is 100 percent necessary to have 100% uptime on it the entire time you're running this build. So you got like Leoric's Crown. Then you have Fury of the Ancients, which means our Call of the Ancients gains the effect of Ancient Fury, and your Ancient Attacks attack 100% faster, which is huge. We got Stone of Gauntlets for much armor increase. Every time we get hit, we uh, gain more armor, but our attack speed and movement speed gets slowed, but this is counteracted by our Ice Climbers, which prevents immunity to freeze and mobilize, mobilize effects, which is what Stone Gauntlets does. Okay, then we have uh, Cinder Coat. You could swap out the chess piece. I like Cinder Coat because this is a fire-based damage build. So having the re uh, reduced cost on our fire skills, which would be our Hammer of the Ancients, is huge so we can just smash out even more. Squirts for double damage. Mordix Brace, which gives Wrath of the Berserker every rune, which is very key to this build. Uh, Band of Might for defense. Casting our Ferocious Charge is going to give us damage reduction up to 80%. COE for just more damage overall on our fire rotations. We have the Blackthorns Jousting Mail, which is going to give us even more fire damage as well as frenzy damage. Uh, then, of course, Ice Climbers. And then our other two main items that you have to have is Remorseless, which while we have both Wrath of the Berserker and Call of Ancients active, our Hammer of the Ancient deals 731% more damage. You could max this out at 800. Uh, and then Ingium is my difference here. I'm running Ingium because I want to have 100% uptime on both of Call of the Ancients and Wrath of the Berserker. When I get an Ancient Echoing Fury, I'm going to run Echoing Fury instead, but I have this as a placeholder for now. Uh, our Legendary Gems, of course, are Legacy of Dreams or LOD. Max this out. This is very important. This build suffers if you do not have this ring maxed out or this gem. Next, we have Bane of the Trap for more damage. And then this is the Flex Gem. There's a lot of different gems that you could run for this, but I like Gogok of Swiftness because of the cooldown reduction per stack. You get another 15% cooldown which is and dodge chance, which is gonna help us keep our uptime on here. Other gems that you could run is Bane of the Stricken. You could run Bane of the Powerful, or you could run Molten Wilderbeast Gizzard to help keep Squirts up at all times. Those are other very, very good gems. You could also run uh, Esoteric Alteration for more damage reduction if you feel like you're squishy. Now into our Kadaya's Cube, and we have Gavel of Judgment. So the damage of the Hammer of the Ancients is increased by 800% and returns Fury. Then we got Bracers of the First Men. Hammer of the Ancients attacks 50% faster and deals 500% increased damage. And then Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac to help with our cooldowns. Okay, now the reason I have this Bracers in here instead of Mordix Brace is because we want to try to max out that damage increase. That's why I always try to put those kind of items in the cube. Just a little pro tip. Skills and passives. Hammer of the Ancient Smash for maximum damage. Blood uh, Battle Rage Bloodshed for uh, even more damage and AoE damage with our crit chance. Uh, Ferocious Charge Merciless Assault to help speed around the map even faster. And then Sprint Marathon for more movement speed. And then of course, Call of the Ancients together as one. And then we have Wrath of the Berserker Insanity, even though it doesn't matter because we get access to all the runes. And then remember on your Call of the Ancients, we have together as one and then also ancient fury so we get um fury back okay into our passives we have rampage this is one of the best passives on uh the barbarian class it's absolutely insane we have berserker rage we deal 25 percent additional damage near maximum fury 
Ruthless for even more damage to enemies below 30%. And then, of course, Boonable Kathos to help with cooldowns on both of these. If you didn't want to run Berserker Rage, you do have a few options here, okay? You could run Weapon Master. You could also run Brawler, which is actually really good. Pound of Flesh for movement speed if you feel like you're not moving fast enough. And then if you're definitely on Hardcore, you're going to run um, Tough as Nails, or not Tough as Nails, but um, what is it? Uh, where is it? Your Cheat Death, Nerves of Steel. So for this, I like Ber uh, Berserker's Rage, but what I am going to do is just... I'm going to run Brawler for this one just to showcase. So that is the build, guys. We're going to go over and do a GR. I kind of want to showcase the 100 for you guys, so that's what we're going to do. And how you play this build is fairly simple. You're going to pop Call of the Ancients and Berserker uh, right before you get into a mob. You're going to pop uh, Battle Rage right off the start. And then you're going to Ferocious Charge and Sprint nonstop from mob to mob. Because we have Ingium, we're going to kind of Elite Hunt here. Uh, and to try to keep these up uh, at 100% uptime. So that's how we're going to do it. Let's roll. Let's go. Sweet. Boom, baby. Give me my stuff. Build is very fun, very fast. The only thing that really suffers from this build that I hate is not having... The smash effect from last season. It was so good. Yep, keep our uptime going. Smash all these guys. Just zoom around. Very, very fun. Very, very good build. It definitely benefits from a lot of enemies being in groups. Lost our Call of the Ancients. Give me that back. Try to ferociously charge and hit enemies to reset it. And you're just going to keep zooming around. Okay. Oh, man. We got a bad map here. That's okay. It's all right. We'll make do. We'll make do. We'll make do. That oh, guy's tanky, bro. Yeah. First five on a pylon. Sweet. The build is very, very good at pushing. I really, really enjoy this build. Make sure to pop your potions. I always forget to do that. Easy. Again, you're not too worried about like minions that are kind of stragglers. You kind of want to kill as many like groups of monsters as possible. Oh, sweet and elite. You don't want to like, you know, a couple of monsters, groups that are just like two to three, maybe even four. Sometimes they may not even be worth it to, to smash those guys. Uh, it does help for your obsidian ring of the zodiac, but sometimes it's not worth it because you just need to you just need to move along move along to the next pack because your bloodshed is really just going to do a lot of that damage against the smaller mobs. Yeah, you definitely don't want to spend too much time on them because bloodshed naturally is just going to deal the damage. You just want to get around, find that next elite pack. Smash out. And then single target damage, it's actually pretty good. Smash in. Done deal, man. Two and a half minutes on a GR100 is very, very, very good. Very, very good. With low gems, too. We got a 99, a 100, and then our Gogok is only a 60. 61. So very, very, very strong build. You do lose out on the attack speed and movement speed from... Uh, two, two and a half minutes is not bad for a GR100. So you do lose out on that. But one thing I do want to mention with this build is that having the almost 100% uptime on these two abilities is just so important. I cannot stress that enough. The next big thing that you got to make sure that you do with this build is to make sure you have not only everything ancient, but have it augmented. Okay, this build really suffers. Most LOD builds suffer if they're not ancient. Because as you see here, Legacy of Dreams, each legendary has increased uh, your damage via 375%, but it doubles to 750% if it's ancient. So have it all ancient. We have everything ancient except for Remorseless and our Mordix Brace. 
So we are still lacking there, but overall, the build is very, very good. Very strong, it is my absolute favorite, especially last season with the Smash. I wish we could have that ability back, but it is what it is. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like the video if you have enjoyed it for all Barbarian maids out there. Comment down below, guys, what do you think about Hoda and if you guys are running Echoing Fury instead of Ingium. And then, make sure to subscribe, guys. We are on our way to 10K before Diablo 4 releases. And as always, stay gaming. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.